Hello everybody, I am David Shipley Alexander. Welcome to my Infinite Energy series on YouTube. In my first introductory video, I defined infinite energy as usable energy produced by a non-conventional source. In my second video, I gave background information on what's known as LENR. That's an acronym for Low Energy Nuclear Reactions. In this, my third video, I present advances in LENR after Andrea Rossi's 2011 demonstration of his one half megawatt ECAT and how this new source of energy could improve our lives. I give a disclaimer here that companies are competing to introduce the LENR technology first, so some details are not being released yet. Internet pictures show small ceramic LENR reactor tubes glowing at incandescent temperatures. This high temperature will greatly increase the potential conversion efficiency from heat into electricity. For those who want to do more background reading, I give the lenrcanr.org reference below. There is much published information. CANR is an acronym for chemically assisted nuclear reactions, but it's really the same thing as LENR. I give here an extremely important safety warning. Such high temperature experiments should only be done by adults who are familiar with lab or industrial safety procedures. Hydrogen is chemically still hydrogen and leaks from an incandescent situation will be fire, there will be a fire or explosion. A blast shield is mandatory. Pointing these things out, I can assume no responsibility for your safety. Please be safe. LENR reactions cannot, so to speak, run away like classical nuclear physics. If the nickel melts, the high surface area of a lot of little grains is lost. Hydrogen absorption stops and the LENR reaction shuts down. That's a big plus. LENR is a game changer because the heat per mass of LENR reactants is theoretically approximately one million times the heat released from the same mass of chemical reactions. To be conservative with that number, I multiply times a half in case not all the nickel can react and then times another half to allow for unknowns. That still gives a big number, 250,000 to 1 ratio. Saying that another way, you would have to combust 250,000 pounds of conventional fuel to provide the heat that could be released from one pound of LENR reactants. I present next a what I call a high-level visionary view of three real-world energy scenarios which can be significantly changed and improved with LENR. Heat and electricity for the home, fuel for automobiles, and fuel for commercial aircraft. I started with internet data for for the amount of hydrocarbon fuels, and then these are, use the averages for United States homes and cars. Home heating per year, the 27,000 cubic feet of natural gas could be replaced with 0 0.005 pound of LENR reactants. Home electricity, 11,000 kilowatt hours per year could be replaced with 0 0.03 pound of LENR reactants. And that's assuming a 30% efficient 
that's heat to electricity, Stirling engine, which was invented more than 200 years ago in 1816, and it runs on external heat, not internal combustion. And, and that engine has been studied extensively in recent decades. So my vision is that every 10 years or so, a service technician would remove a cartridge of depleted reactants from your basement cogeneration power system and replace it with a cartridge of new reactants. So old concepts, such as underground pipes for natural gas, which have a danger and, and maintenance costs, and similarly the overhead electric power grid, which has danger and vulnerability, they're both obsolete. This is a new business waiting to be born, many times larger than the internet. For the automobile, I choose as a basis driving a car 100,000 miles before a major overhaul. That would require 4,000 gallons of gasoline, but that could be replaced with 0.1 pound of LENR reactants. A Stirling engine larger than the one for the home would be used with the car to convert heat to mechanical motion. Part of that major overhaul for the car is, is again to replace a cartridge of depleted reactants with a new cartridge. Fueling every few hundred miles is obsolete. And this is another new business waiting to be born, many times larger than the internet. After a best conversion from heat to engine thrust is developed, for large aircraft propulsion. The characteristics of LENR propelled aircraft will improve dramatically from the present technology. For example, the Boeing 777, a long range version of that, can carry 321,000 pounds of fuel as part of its 766,000 pound maximum takeoff weight. That is 42% fuel weight. The 321,000 pounds of combustion fuel would be replaced with 1.3 pound of LENR reactants. Fuel weight is then a non-issue. In the event of a survivable hard landing, there would not be the potential spillage and ignition of a large amount of liquid fuel. This is a big plus for safety. Nickel availability is not an issue. LENR researchers have stated that only 1% of the nickel mined annually could provide all of our energy needs. Nickel is not rare. The annual production of nickel is 2 million tons. In conclusion, the evolution of LENR technology into a higher temperature regime makes it appear usable as a safe point source means of producing heat, electricity, and vehicle propulsion. For future videos, the plan is to present some of the NASA LENR connections, past and possibly future. With chemical fuels, human trips to Mars, and these are becoming much more widely discussed now, require a long coasting time between planets. I believe LENR propulsion would be able to decrease the trip time significantly. Another upcoming video will present a completely different model of the atomic nucleus, which I believe is worth further study as it could lead to technology breakthroughs. Thank you very much for your attention. Until the next time, I am David Shipley Alexander.